Now then, here we are, me and the beautiful blue in a fantastic set of woods. I have camped in these woods many a time since I was a kid and it's just one of those places that just feels like home to me. I absolutely love it here. So tonight we are going to be ground dwelling. Normally I bring a hammock but um, we're going to lay on the ground tonight and uh, camp out there and uh, we definitely need to light a fire because it's going to be uh, down to freezing tonight so that's going to be our method of keeping warm and obviously i need to cook food as well i have got a set of pork ribs can't wait for that um so i'm going to cook those and a couple of other bits and then what i'll also do is i'll show you some of the items that i bring with me when i come and do these sorts of things um, and some of those items that i've made myself and some that my dad's made so should be interesting for you guys so anyway well, let's get on set up a tarp and make a bit of a shelter So one of the first jobs is to put on your tool belt. So on here, I've got an axe, a saw, and a knife. If you have it on a separate belt, it's brilliant because then you can just bang it on over the top of whatever you're wearing. And you can take it off when you want then as well, very easily. And just set everything else up. I always have my axe on my left hand side, and my knife and saw on my right hand side, knife being at the front, so you can always just grab that because you use that generally more than anything else I would say, but there we go. So I've just pulled this tap just across straight here and I'm just gonna do a very simple lean to, but I need to peg it down. So I'm gonna go make some pegs now. So I just need to find a little bit of timber that's strong enough to make a few pegs with. My God, it is a cold one. I will show you exactly what I've done here. So we set up a tarp. I've just got a, a line set up right through between two trees and then a complete lean-to, which just comes down here to a simple peg, pulling it out. And then what I've done is I've folded it under itself and pegged it out again. This just allows you to have like this shelf section at the back here, just to put all your kit and keep it dry. I've also got a bit of a tarp on the floor there, which is just gonna keep me off the ground. And then this is just my old therma rest, so I'm going to use that to sleep on. But next job, we're going to have to set a fire up here because uh, it is so cold, I cannot tell you. So from this, we can um, 
hopefully get a bit of heat from that reflecting off this back wall which should be good well this tree is perfect for some firewood there's a lot of dead stand in there which uh, is great because obviously anything that's uh, upright won't take on moisture so it's a lot drier than the wood that you'll find on the floor of the woodland so i'm going to chop a bit of this down and get this back to camp So there we go, we've got a bit of wood collection going on. So hopefully that'll just sort, sort me out for a, a while anyway. And then um, I'll, I might need to go get a bit more, but there's some pretty chunky pieces there, which will burn for a long time, which is good. Um, the dog is chewing some of these uh, branches here. And I think what he does is, I think it's like a pack mentality thing that, where he's just trying to help out the pack by um, doing what I'm doing, which is gathering wood and dragging it around and stuff. So he keeps trying to copy me and do exactly the same. So Well, I've come out to find some water. And uh, this down here is a little sort of spring that I've drunken from all my life pretty much and I've never had a problem drinking directly from it. So I'm quite happy to take this water, fill up my bag and then use this to drink. But I would never recommend that. Um, as I say, I've tried and tested this one so I, do, I feel comfortable with it and confident with it. But um, you can't risk just having water out of the ground because, you know, a lot of the time there is a lot of uh, bad microorganisms in there that can make you really poorly so you just have to be really careful so ideally boil it properly boil your water first um to be fair most of this i'll probably boil anyway because i'll be making cups of tea so anyway let's get some of this water out of here Well, the sun's dropped down now and the temperature is dropping drastically with it. So I've got to say, I'm glad that I've got this snood on, which is uh, something that my dad made. Um, he processed this from uh, scratch. So he actually trimmed the sheep, got the fleece off the sheep, um, and then he's spun the wool and then knitted it um, just to form this shape, which is pretty damn cool, really. And obviously it's a brilliant, um, item to have because it's covering your head and your shoulders which is a place where you lose a lot of your heat so it actually does make a hell of a difference having this on uh, the buttons that he's done they're not quite buttons but if you can see that just uh, some leather which is just woven to make that shape and then to actually hold it tight on the other side of this he's uh, just got a little rope section of wool and all we do is if i can show you it's just a friction one i'll try to do this one-handed so you just wrap that around a couple of times and that will just hold it in position so there's three little toggles there just to hold it but it's pretty cool i mean it looks a bit like um i don't know like an ewok or something or um no i know what it is it's obi-wan kenobi that's what it is so yeah looking cool in the woods anyway i need to uh, get a fire lit because this is on its own isn't enough to keep me warm so i've done quite a bit of processing of wood if you can see here Got a little bit of pile wood there there's some of the thicker stuff and then i've got other sections of wood there of all different stages just to get this fire going i've also got another bit here which is just in case that i need to do a little bit more in the night but i'm hoping i'll have enough really 
Anyway, it is time to light this fire. Blue, come here, come on. He'll definitely appreciate it. He loves lying in front of the fire. Come on. He's a good boy. Yeah, starting to get some decent heat off this fire now. It's really nice. <coughs> a little bit smoky here and there just because the wind is uh, not sure exactly which way to blow, but anyway, part and parcel of this game, as is this. You always cut yourself when you come out into the woods. I don't even know how I've done it. I didn't even realise I'd done it. Well, I'm wrapped up snood on i've got this alpaca blanket on that my dad made as well um it's a blanket but it does actually buckle around your neck so you can actually use it as well just to put over your back anyway i am gonna start off with a couple of potatoes and just get these sort of prepped ready to go on the fire so all i will do is uh, if i can find my knife Uh, grab a knife out I'm just going to give them a stab just so they can breathe a little bit in there two potatoes and all I'm going to do with each of these is just wrap in a bit of tin foil well just while I'm uh, waiting for hunger to kick in I'm going to make myself a cup of tea so I've just got my uh, little kettle I'll just pour some of this water in that I got out of that spring. And we'll get this boiling up. Cup of tea in woods. Can't beat it, eh? Nothing fancy, I'm just gonna sit this on the fire. Try flatten a section off. And just leave that to boil. Well, I just thought I'd show you some of the tools that I use when I'm doing a bit of bushcraft. First one is the main one being a knife. So this is my bushcraft knife that I generally use. I've got quite a lot of these. Uh, I'm a bit obsessed with knives and axes and things. Um, but that is the sheath from a saddle which I made. An old saddle. And that's why it just looks battered and old from the start. Which is just so much nicer than all the new ones you get. Um, but yeah, all hand stitch and obviously just a, a little bit of uh, polishing here and there just to make it look a bit nicer. But inside here we've got my bushcraft knife, which I quite like the Nesmuk style one, which is this sort of fatter belly rather than the sort of a traditional bushcraft knife that you get. Um, just a bit more solid for whacking about and hammering around, that's all. Um, but yeah, again, this is a knife that I made. This is the... Um, oak handled one that I've done uh, and if you can see there it's just got green liners and I've got stainless steel pins in it so yeah pretty cool I like this um, style of uh, lanyard for it as well which is like a, a noose and this is my my standard one that I do I do it on all my knives um, and I don't think I know anyone else who knows how to do that one um, but it's pretty cool and it just allows you to, when you hold your knife, you've just got something to slip back onto, a bit more solid. So, so yeah, that's my main knife. Um, what I do though, I always carry sort of a second knife 
Uh, this is another one that I made. Um, again, that's out of some old um, leather, which is, I think that's off the same saddle actually. Um, but what I've done with this one, I've, I've put a couple of holes there so you can have it as a neck knife upside down like that, so it just hang around your neck. Um, and this knife is, it's awesome really because um, I use it for the kitchen really, but it's actually made out of my kitchen worktop, which is some Corian. So if you can see that, it's just a piece of Corian. And all I've done is just put some white liners on it. This knife is just a smaller version of the uh, traditional sort of style bushcraft knife. And I really like it. Fits in three fingers. And then this is why I like this lanyard as well, because your fourth finger wraps onto that just to give you a bit more sort of a support with it really. Stop it flying out of your hand. But perfect little knife. As I say, I can use it as a neck knife. And what I did was, I was quite clever with this. I've, I've Inside here, I've actually got it so it slips and catches on the lip here. So if you listen, it locks in. And then it's absolutely solid that. So this is where you can have it upside down and hang it round your neck. And then let's move on to, well, pretty standard. Um, just one of these uh, Laplander saws by Baco, is it? I can't remember. I can't even remember. Oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> but that's your standard sort of saw. Everyone's got one of those, really, if you're into bushcraft. And again, all I did was I made a little sheath for it. It just slots in, belt loop, just hang it on your belt, absolutely perfect. The axe that I use is a Grand Falls Brooks axe. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'll put it on the screen just there. Might be the forest axe, I can't remember. Anyway, um, it's just a, a small one, but with this you can do a hell of a lot of damage around camp. It's absolutely brilliant, really. Um, comes with a little sheath, just slot that back in clip that up and then what I've made for this is a belt loop um, and if you can see this this is actually the end of a belt that was too long for me and all I've done is, is stitch that round and attach that to another piece of leather which I've shaped so when this slots in it just sits in beautifully and hangs from your belt so there you go a bit of leather work make a couple of knives It'd be pretty cool to make an axe I think that'll be my next job so the fire's died down a little bit now, which um, just means it's getting to a better temperature for cooking. There's plenty of embers there which are good. You don't want flame because you just burn everything really quickly. Um, especially when I'm cooking the way I'm going to cook, and that is these pork ribs. So there's a hell of a lot in here, so I'm going to give the dog a couple raw. Um, I might give him a cooked one or two as well later if, uh, if he fancies it. But um, there's plenty here for me and obviously enough for the dog as well. He's got some more food, and obviously I do. Um, what else have we got? Some shallots. A couple of red peppers. Um, a courgette. A leek. <laughs> I've also got two potatoes which are sat in the fire now. They've been in for the last hour, just sort of uh, chilling out and cooking through, because they can take quite a while, can those? So, Let's get my kitchen knife out and then I'm going to chop some of this up, uh, season it with a bit of salt and pepper, nice and simple, and then um, we'll get it cooking over these embers. So first of all, I've got some oil in here with some butter. <coughs> oh dear. So I'll pour some oil out. And then what I'm going to do is, is just Get these ribs, look at that, and then I'm just going to lay it in, and then I've got some salt and pepper here, so I'll just give it a nice sprinkling of salt and pepper, and then I'll shove that onto my little cooking rack, I won't have to do one at a time here. Look at that, another set. Beautiful ribs. So, again, put a dot of oil on. And 
a little bit more salt and pepper. And then put that on there as well. So this fire, we've got some nice hot embers there just in the bottom. So I'll just rake those around a little bit. Plenty of heat coming off that. And then what I'm going to do is just sit that over the top and just let it cook away. So while that's cooking, I'm going to uh, get my knife out and do a bit of chopping up. So this leek, I'm just going to round off into here. And it's a titanium plate this, so I'm going to use this for actually cooking on. Rough cut a bit of leek. Shallot's the same. Oh, I'll buy it smoky. Let's chop uh, these shallots up. I'll just sort of half these. Let's get another one on. I might save one for morning for my breakfast. So there we go, we have some leek and shallots. So what I'm going to do is now add a little bit of that oil if I can find it. And that's just a simple olive oil. And again, a little bit of seasoning. Bit of salt and pepper and then what I'll do is I'll just pop this on the edge of the fire just to get a little bit of heat to it. Let's have a look. There we go. Nothing fancy tonight. I just uh, chopped a little bit of holly here so this is green so it won't burn but the shape of it with this big sort of T on the end just allows me to pop that underneath there and pick the ribs up hopefully without dropping them so at least I've got a little bit of control of the heat there so that all seems to be cooking well this is my faithful spoon and spatula which I made years and years ago and I just keep sharpening a little bit more off that end just to keep it clean Give those a stir. That's a bit black there. You've got to be a bit careful with these titanium plates because you can get a bit too hot in places and burn it. Looking good though. So just to add to those lovely shallots they're just sweating off nicely with those leeks I'm just going to add some of this red pepper so I'll just do some big long chunks of this pop them into the pan Oh, those leeks and shallots smell incredible. I am excited. So the final thing to pop in, add a bit of green. So I'm just going to do some, I'll probably do this in long strips actually, but quite thick. Might split it into three. Nope, which doesn't go very well with this thicker knife. Slowly work my way through. Bang that on top of the uh, peppers and the onions. 
Oh, chunky. Chunky meal. Nothing fancy here though, is it? In the woods. We'll get those on. I'll put another dot of oil on top of that. So it's not going to burn too much to the bottom of that titanium plate. Why not? Let's get a little bit more salt and pepper on. Lovely, eh? I'm just going to try these ribs. See what they're like. This is the one that I put on first and it burnt quite quickly on one side. It just shows you how hot it does get. Let's have a look at this though. Oh look, it tears off. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is incredible. Gonna take some eating though. Tear a bit off. Oh my. Oh. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. So a bite of pepper with it. Mm. Wow. It's definitely a, a primal one is this. Sat in the woods, chewing on some old ribs. Gorgeous though, unbelievable. Mm. This is living the dream, totally. Look at that. Just fantastic. It's a messy one, definitely, but... Oh, yes. Amazing. Mm. Something really good, though, about eating with your fingers. The leak. Unbelievable. Let's try a bit of this um, shallot. Oh, yeah. Yep. This is it. Just wow. Just wow. Are you kidding? Oh well, those ribs are taking the toll on my teeth. Don't know if you can see that. That is <laughs> my chipped tooth. I've had a bit added on and it's come off. <laughs> so, yes. It's no good, is it? Primal. Teeth are falling out now. <laughs> oh well. Another job I'll have to get sorted. Oh, just look. Can't believe my tooth chips again. So look at these courgettes. Just browning off nicely. Oh beautiful, look at that. So I've just got to try the potato now. So let's check one of these potatoes now. Can't believe I've ripped my tooth out. Absolutely gutted. Oh these look good. That does look good. Steaming away. It's soft anyway. So with that, I'm gonna get my knife. I'm just gonna split it down the center. Just open it up. And then what I brought is 
I put it in with the oil, just some butter, a big knob of butter sat in the middle of the oil. And they don't really mix unless you melt them. So I'm just going to take some butter and just drop that into the centre of this. Careful doing that one. <laughs> oh, yes. So it's going to be a bit hot, I think, for the minute. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Simple things. Butter, salt and pepper, that's all you need. That's just incredible. So I'm just going to uh, mix it all in, make it into a bit more of a mash. So last thing to try, a bit of this courgette. Ow! Which is pretty hot still. I'll just leave that out a second. This tastes as good as any restaurant you go to. It really does. Fantastic. Bit of courgette now. Unbelievable. It doesn't matter what you cook on a fire, it just tastes good. olive oil, salt and pepper on some of these over a, a barbecue. Honestly, it's as good as you get. Marry it up with a bit of halloumi and it's just gorgeous that. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited? Mm. I know what you're thinking. Don't eat off a knife as well. Especially a super sharp one like this. But when they're out doing this sort of thing, it makes you a bit more mindful, I would say. You know, you have to be careful, you can't injure yourself. You know, you, you get to sort of really sort of feel the food going in your mouth rather than just sort of throwing it in like you do at home. So it's actually quite a nice way of eating. Mm. Yeah, good. So we'll look at this skin and just have a taste of that. Yes, just yes. Right, I've got one more set of these ribs. So I'm gonna give some to the dog raw. And I'll have the other half, I reckon. Some nice chunky meat on that one. Can you see that? Good, eh? So let's give this a split down the middle. And then look. Alright, I'm gonna bang half on straight away, minus the hair, onto the fire, and then this half, I'm going to give to Blue, who is, I don't even know where he is, Blue come here, <whistles> good boy, here, yeah. ready, what's this, like that, Good boy. Go on then. Not that nice. Good boy. Right, let me wipe my fingers again. Just got a few baby wipes with me just to help me out. I'm not too bothered about touching raw and all that. Putting it in my mouth. Not when it's uh, from a decent butcher and it's not near chicken, because chicken's the worst one I would say. Pork's not too bad. 
Wow, it's good. It is good. I can't believe though, I've knocked my tooth off. My, uh, it's like a big white filling at the front. And without it, I just look horrendous, it's terrible. But I did it when I was 18 and I was messing about, as you do. And me and a couple of mates, we were at this um, pub and there was a band on. Absolutely epic night out. And um, until this point, and my mate was like going on the stage, he was like going, oh, I'll stage dive. And he, he went to jump off. So me and my friend held hands opposite each other to try catch him. The weight of his body just threw our hands down, forced us forward. And me and my mate basically just hit mouths together. And straight away I was like, oh, damn, I've, um, I've chipped my tooth. Um, I, I ran my tongue along the front of my teeth. I was like, oh my God. And I went to my mate, I was like, I went, have I chipped my tooth? This is after a few beers. And he went, he just went, his face dropped. I was like, oh my God, no. And uh, he was like, what about mine? I was like, yours are fine. But he had my bits of tooth in his mouth. He thought he'd broken his as well. And uh, yeah, that was not very nice. But I went home, home after that and uh, Obviously, I chipped three of my front teeth, basically. Two minor ones and then one quite major, which has sort of snapped in half. And I went home to my mum and I was like, Mum, look what I've done. And I'm not joking, she cried for a week. I used to have the most beautiful teeth, I really did, um, until that point. So, anyway, I'd like to think that you live and learn, but um, I still do stupid stuff. <laughs> mm. Just an idiot, eh? Spent my life doing daft stuff. Well, I'm gonna get these last set of ribs that just look beautiful. Let's just tear this up. Let's have a look at this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes. Time for another cup of tea. I'm gonna pop this on the fire again. Let that boil. Nice cup of tea. Drop the milk. So I've got this cardboard tube here. And I brought this to sh just to show you what we used to do as kids. Now we had an endless supply of these and um, they're slightly different now because they are generally treated so they don't burn as easily. But we used to light these as kids on one end, which I've done here. Um, it's currently nearly out actually, it's just sort of smoking. And we used to use these as torches and we'd spend hours on an evening when it was dark just uh, working our way around the woods. And they're absolutely fantastic because currently it's nearly out and all you have to do is to get it going is just give it a good spin around and there we go the torch is lit it's clever very clever and we used to take three or four of these into the woods on a night and camp out. And this would be our like, light for the evening. We never had any sort of fancy head torches or anything like that. We'd just take one of these and you'd stub it out on the ground so there was like hardly any glow left. And all you do is, is give it a good sort of whack around again and it would soon uh, bring it back to life. And also the good thing is, if you turn it upside down, it would draw air and 
flames would come up through the whole section of it and then it would heat your hands up so it keep you warm as well so yeah very clever anyway this one i'm going to go stick on the fire and uh, let it burn out let's get over there then Losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need. Well, the fire's giving off plenty of heat. I've put some oak on it, so that's always a hot burner, which is good. So I've got the fire sort of uh, keeping me warm from this side, and that's all my sort of legs and my front. And then obviously having this uh, alpaca, it's sort of like a shawl really, because you can attach it around your neck here, and it just uh, is keeping my back warm. Obviously, as well as having this uh, woolen snood on, so yeah, the back here is nice and warm, the front's nice and warm, and it's a very, very comfortable place to be. If I didn't have this on though, I would definitely be cold because it is just chilly. The wind is just uh, howling through here, really. But it also helps as well because I've built this fire up against this rock, and this rock is reflecting the heat towards me. So definitely works well as a winter way of camping. Well, the fire's still uh, chucking out a hell of a lot of heat, which is nice. But it's time to get ready for bed, really, so I'm going to uh, just let it die down. And I'll have to uh, take some of these layers off and get into a sleeping bag. The dog's happy. He's just uh, laid at the back of this tarp there. Fast asleep. And I am... A very happy man after having fantastic meal it's always so nice cooking on a fire just the taste you get from it's incredible and just being out in all this it's lovely and the winds died down a little bit now so this is why I think I'm getting quite hot to be honest so time to try lower my body temperature rather than trying to raise it what a lovely night though. It's one of them nights where you can just sort of sit back and just reflect on life and, you know, even though shit happens, like look at my tooth. Ooh. <laughs> Dumb and dumber, eh? <laughs> oh dear. It's just one of them things. There's no point dwelling on it. You might as well just try Keep yourself happy in life and not worry about these things. Anyway, it is time to lay this lug. So from me and the beautiful blue, we'll see you in the morning.
morning flowers well that was a very uncomfortable night I was on this uh, sleeping mat which is like an old Thermarest Pro Light 4 I think but it's quite thin it's not very comfortable to be on and every sort of half hour I just had to change my body position so it kept waking me up so it's quite annoying really um, also it was cold really cold so I'm in a, a crappy sleeping bag which is just some sort of carry more thing which you know you don't mind sort of taking to the woods and messing about because it's only cheap but it just doesn't do the job it's not good at all so I'd definitely prefer to be in one of my better quality sleeping bags um, so yeah I just uh, pulled this blanket up over me as well which um, <laughs> which uh, just sort of helped keep me warm but the main sort of cold was uh, just this sort of breeze coming in around my neck <laughs> so luckily I found a buff so as soon as I got this buff on it actually made a difference because it just sort of took that little chill off me I never got to the point where I was shivering but I just had that chill running through my spine so many times anyway the sun has risen it looks a very sort of flat dull day but we're gonna get up and light a fire and we'll have to uh, make a cup of tea and cook some breakfast hey blue got some bacon haven't we bacon butty in the woods well I'm up and dressed I just thought I'd quickly show you my sleeping system so obviously I've got the tarp which is just sort of covering here just to give a little bit of shelter and then we had this blanket which is like an alpaca blanket that my dad made and when that fell off it was actually really cold so I had to make sure that I kept pulling it back on in the night this is just some carry more let's have a look it's a three season sleeping bag comfort plus two degrees it wasn't comfortable definitely not um, I was getting too cold in that but it did get down to freezing I guess and then this is just my sea summit pillow and underneath this we've got this uh, trekker chair covering the Thermarest Pro Light 4 sleeping mat um, not very comfortable at all I definitely prefer a thicker mat
And there we go. Bacon butt is served in the woods. This is it. Oh yeah. Wow, it's so good. Well, you can't beat this. Just how the woods are just so calming. And uh, from here, I've got to get back to my normality of life, which is a shame because I sort of wish this was my normality. It'd be really nice to live out somewhere in the wild. There's Blue just chilled out as well. Hey, come here. There's a good boy. Yeah, it will be nice to live out here. <laughs> hey, Blue, you would, wouldn't you? Given the choice. Anyway, it is time to pack all the gear up and just make sure that there is no trace left. <sighs> yeah, just brilliant, eh? Just brilliant. Backpack on, all packed up, ready to go. So here's my campsite, completely clean, leave no trace as always. Fire's completely extinguished with water and we've just got the beautiful blue, just waiting for command for uh, him to come and follow me. He's <laughs> just looking, come on then, blue. Come on. There he goes. He's a good dog. Yes, time to walk our way back home. So I'm going to get myself home and I will feel elated for probably two or three days after this one. And in that time, I'll be thinking about my next adventure and where I want to get out and get my next hit of mother nature. Anyway, if you've liked the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you uh, would like to contribute to the channel by um, buying me a coffee on buy me a coffee link in the description, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Anyway, from me and from the beautiful blue, we will see you another day. Take care.